There's a vegetable that's sitting in refrigerators all across America right now that could be the reason your gut feels off. And most people would never suspect it. I've seen patients add it to smoothies, salads, and soups, thinking they were doing their body a huge favor. It's often called one of the healthiest foods on earth, and yet, for some people, it's a silent troublemaker. And before anyone thinks I'm about to launch an all-out attack on vegetables, that's not what this is. I'm carnivore, so this food isn't a big part of my diet anymore. But my wife Karan is ketivore, which means she eats some plants. And she enjoys this vegetable regularly. For her, it's a great option. For others, not so much. That's why I want you to hear this story. Tanya is a 45-year-old woman with the kind of energy that lights up a room. She grew up eating a variety of vegetables, collards, mustard greens, turnip greens, a cultural staples she loves. A few years ago, she was introduced to Dr. Sabi's teachings and embraced a more plant-based way of eating. She was committed. She wanted to fuel her body with what she believed was nature's most healing foods. And she was doing everything right according to the blogs and influencers she followed. She started her day with green drink, the same one she saw countless wellness experts recommending. Lunch might be a big salad. Dinner would have a generous serving of cooked greens. She was proud of herself until things started to change. She noticed more bloating, a nagging ache in her joints, and sometimes after using the bathroom, a burning sensation that made her worry something more serious was going on. She saw her primary care doctor, who ran a few tests. Nothing major came up. The advice? Drink more water. Relax. Try probiotics. She followed the advice, but her symptoms persisted. That's when she found me. I always start with a simple question when someone comes to me with gut issues. Tell me what you eat in a typical week. As Tanya went through her daily meals, one food kept showing up over and over in generous amounts. That so-called superfood. Spinach. Here's where it gets interesting. Spinach is one of the darlings of the low carb and keto world because it's nutrient dense. It's versatile and it's incredibly low in carbs. Roughly one carb per cup. That's why people in the keto and ketovore community often use it in omelets, salads, and smoothies. It's the kind of green you can load into your plate without worrying about spiking your blood sugar. And if you tolerate it, it's an amazing choice. That's why Karan enjoys it as part of her ketovore approach. It works for her. But for people like me, and for many others I've met in my clinic, it can cause more harm than good. Spinach is loaded with compounds called oxalates. Oxalates are a natural defense mechanism for plants. Their way of discouraging animals and insects from eating too much of them. In small amounts, most people handle them just fine. But in higher amounts, or in people with certain genetics or gut microbiome differences, oxalates can cause trouble. When you eat spinach, those oxalates can bind to minerals like calcium and magnesium in your gut. That means you might absorb less of those minerals, which can affect everything from your bones to muscle function. If you don't have enough of certain gut bacteria that break down oxalates, more of them get absorbed into your bloodstream. Once there, they can form sharp calcium oxalate crystals. These crystals are the main ingredient in kidney stones. But even when they don't form stones, they can irritate tissues, including the lining of your gut. That irritation can contribute to a phenomena many call leaky gut, where the tight junctions between your intestinal cells become more permeable. When that happens, particles that normally wouldn't get into your bloodstream, like undigested food proteins, can sip through, triggering immune reactions. For some people, this shows up as bloating and gas. For others, it's skin rashes, joint pain, or urinary symptoms. Now, not everyone reacts this way. Some people have gut microbiomes rich in bacteria like oxalobacter firmigens, which can break down oxalates before they cause trouble. Others eat spinach occasionally, not in the kind of daily large amounts Tanya was consuming. So their body never reaches that tipping point. But Tanya's diet, combined with her lack of dairy or other calcium-rich foods, meant there was nothing in her gut to bind those oxalates before they could be absorbed. When I explained this to Tanya, her first reaction was disbelief. But spinach is healthy. And it is for many people. I'm not here to demonize spinach. If you eat it and feel great, keep eating it. 
In fact, from a low carb perspective, spinach is a gem. Packed with folate, vitamin K, magnesium, and antioxidants all without the blood sugar spike. But for some people, the oxalate content outweighs those benefits. Tanya agreed to try removing it for a month. She swapped her green smoothie for a protein-rich breakfast, traded the big spinach salads for low-oxalate greens like romaine and arugula, and focused more on nutrient-dense animal foods, beef, eggs, fish. Within two weeks, the bloating was gone. The bathroom discomfort disappeared. Her energy improved. The lesson here is that food isn't good or bad in an absolute sense. It's about how it works in your body. Spinach can be an amazing part of a low carb or keto or diet if you tolerate it. But if you've been dealing with unexplained gut discomfort, urinary symptoms, or joint pain, it might be worth experimenting with a break from it. You don't have to swear off every green forever. You could rotate your greens, steam and drain high oxalate vegetables to lower oxalate content. Pair them with calcium rich foods if you tolerate dairy. Or try other low carb veggies that don't have the same effect. And if you're like me and thrive on a carnivore approach, you may simply find your gut feels better without them. Tanya's story may not be your story, but if it is, if you've been eating what you thought was the healthiest food in the world and you still feel unwell, it might be time to question whether that food is truly serving you. Your gut health is too important to ignore. If you've noticed your symptoms change when you remove healthy food, drop your story in the comments. I'd love to hear it because it helps others realize they're not alone. And if you want to continue watching videos to help you achieve metabolic health, start with the one right here on the screen. Or just subscribe to my channel right here. Your health journey is personal. Honor what works for you. And don't be afraid to experiment.